Hi everyone, George here from Locked On Art, and welcome to part 3 of my Sherman Calliope full build. In this video I'll be concentrating more on the technical side of things, with all of the wiring and the cable systems, and also completing the tank, as well as scratch building the rockets to go inside the tubes. And I have a mock-up of a rocket here. Most of it's not going to be seen, so it's not very detailed. All it is is a plastic rod inside a plastic tube. This end cone piece has been carved out of this tube and stuck onto the end. And that fits nice and snug into the tube. And it will just stick out of the end just a little bit. Now that all the rockets are in position, I can move on to the contact arms and the release levers. So there was two contact rings for each rocket which the arms made contact with. One was in the middle and one was a bit further out. That's why the arms are different lengths.
So now that's complete, I can move on to the levers for the release mechanism. I've already put a couple on here. So I'm going to connect everything together with wires now. There's a larger wire that goes from this connector to this one. And then there's a smaller wire that goes from this tube onto the next tube. So there's a wee bit of work I need to do on the frame before I assemble the whole thing together. I'm going to be adding the release cables and also these bolts on the frame here are too large so I'll be removing those and redoing them. And there's also another support beam that comes out of the turret to secure the whole frame in place. I just have to adjust this arm because at the moment it's too long. I probably need to take about that much off it. Then I'll be able to add the cable.
I'm just going to mark on the turret where I want the bracket to go. Just line it up. It's this bolt here. And this one. So I made a couple of supports just out of a styrene card. I'm going to fit that onto there. And then I'll trim it up to size. I'm just going to put a bit of putty around the seams to act like a weld and I'm using this plastic putty from Vallejo. What's good about this is it's got a really good precision nozzle which is good for replicating weld seams and things. Then I just usually run my finger over it to smooth it off a bit. I've managed to piece together a tow cable and brackets from my spares box, so I'll be adding that on. Now for the antenna that was mounted here, it was considered to be in the danger zone of the rocket propellant. 
So what they did was they moved it round to the side here. They had a steel beam that came out and the antenna mounted onto that. And then there was a wire running back down into the antenna port. I'm just making the steel beam out of some brass sheet. I'm just scoring out where I want the folds to go. What I have here is a brass turned antenna mount. I've bent the spring part just because I'm going to have the antenna tied down. So that will be mounted onto the side of the turret and it will have a support beam coming out of it as well. Once that's dry, I can add on the weld seams and then I can add the wire onto it. Now for the antenna itself, it was made up of three sections which were three feet long each and they were screwed into each other to make a nine foot antenna. And for the antenna wire, I'm using a 0.3 millimeter wire. Now the wire was run up the side of the turret and it had a couple of metal straps holding it in place. And for the antenna itself, I will be tying it down with something like this. And it'll go down to the hull. But I'll leave that for the time being and do that once everything else is in place. Now since this is the port where all the wires will be going into, there is no periscope or there's no guard either. And I've made the lid from scratch for this one, just to give it that extra bit of detail.
So I've seen a photo of a spare track holder on the back here. And what they did was they used a piece of spare track on the bottom run to act as a shelf where they could store two jerry cans and then have them all strapped in. So I'll be replicating that. Now the kit doesn't come with a spare track holder so what I had to do was make my own. And I've got the two halves here. And I'll be gluing a piece of track in between them just to get the distance and then I can fit the whole thing to the tank. And I've also made up a strap for it, just replicating the one I saw in the photo. I think the most significant thing that I found out while researching this build was how the pods actually attach to the frame because the straps on the pods are not in line with the frame and there was no way to actually screw the pods into the frame because that would prevent the rockets from firing and it was quite a hard thing to find out because all of the photos most of the frame was hidden due to the pods being in the way so it could, took me a good couple of months to research and actually figure out how it was done and it actually says in the instruction manual from the time there were bolts that lined up with the pods of four and they had one bolt for each pod along the frame which actually lined up with these bolts and they screwed in together so as you can see from the picture here you can just see one of them on the end and for a while there I thought that was part of the framework but after reading about the bolts in the actual manual I sort of clicked and I figured out that that's what they were for and for the bolts, I'm just using a 0.5mm plastic rod. So for the wires that went from the rocket pods down to the main controls there was one wire connection every six pods so that was ten wires in total now those wires were bunched up into two groups of three and two groups of two and they went into a larger wire so there was four large wires going down into the controls so how I've gone about this is I've taken three lengths of wire which are 0.3 millimeter wide and I've taped them to a 0.4 millimeter wire. I've used masking tape to simply hold them in place and it also acts as a connection point for the wires. 
and I've just super glued the whole thing into place. So as you can see the rocket system fits onto the turret nicely, everything lines up and is in place. It is also able to be removed for painting and it also retains all of the articulation so the rocket pods can be moved up or down. Now there is a couple of things that I'd like to add before I call the tank done. There's some extra parts I want to add to the stowage bin at the back. As well as some of this stowage that I'll be adding to various points around the tank. This is a resin cast kit from Legend Productions. And I'll just be putting these on loosely for now as I want to be able to paint it before I stick them down.
Now for the stowage, I'll just place it on for now. Not sure of its exact resting place, but it will look something like this, I'm sure. Made a couple of bags with straps on them. So I'll just hang off these handles. Something like that. And for the front, I've made a wee shelf out of balsa wood. I'm just going to keep this as is. So I will glue it down once the model has been painted. For the spare wheel, I'm just going to go ahead and glue that into place. I've also spruced up a couple of old Tamiya helmets. Just added some photo etch straps onto them. So with that done, the model is finally complete. And I have to say, this has been the most challenging model I have made. Especially after the base tank was made, the rest of it was virtually scratch built. With the rocket pods taking a long time to do, and commanding a huge attention to detail. But the Calliope was a tank that I've wanted to build for a long time. And I wanted to get it right, and as accurate as possible. And I'm very pleased with the outcome. So I hope you've enjoyed watching and please subscribe so you don't miss the final part where I will be finishing the tank by fully painting and weathering it. And until next time, thanks very much for watching.